Welcome to the second video introducing the Tektronix 4051 and its basic language. The 4051 was used in many science related applications, so it had a number of math functions. And to facilitate those calculations as well as program control, you could store up to 286 variables. Any of those variables could be made into one or two dimensional arrays. So let's see how we set variables. We use the let statement. We give the name of the variable, which can be any letter, and it can optionally be followed by a digit. And if we type the name of the variable, it will show the current value. We could also use the print command. You can also set variables to real numbers. You don't have to use the let command, as I just showed. You can just say, the variable name equals a value, and that's what most people did. So in most program listings, you'll never see a let command. You can set a variable equal to the result of a calculation, a mathematical expression, and it calculates the result. These calculations can include complex computations, reasonably so. Here's an example where we use parentheses to help determine the order of evaluating the expression. You can also raise numbers to any power with the up arrow. And here we get the result of eight. Variables can be set by referring to the value of another variable. So if A is 2 and 3 quarters, B should be 3 and 3 quarters. But if you try to use a variable that's not set yet, you get an undefined variable in immediate line error. The 4051 has over a dozen built-in math functions, and we'll go through them fairly quickly. First, there's the trig functions. There's the sign. Now we used a value close to pi because it's by default it uses radians. But we can use the set command to set it to using degrees. Let's take the sine of 90 degrees and we get 1. And now we can also do cosine or tangent. There's also the arc functions. It's still got the extra digit in there. Let's try that again. Arc tangent of 1 is 45. There's also log both base 10 and base e. And you can take e to the power of a value. And if you want to raise 10 to a power, you can just use the up arrow. There are a number of miscellaneous functions. Let's clear the screen first. One takes the integer value of a number. It just lops off the decimal part. Let's see what happens if we try the negative value. rounds down, or doesn't really round. You can take the absolute value of a number. You could also just find the sine of a number. Sine of zero, zero. You can also use pi as a shortcut for that. And you can take square roots. 
let's clear the screen and take a look at some other functions and let's look at a few other things that the 4051 can do. One is it can generate random numbers. We do this first by telling it to set its random number sequence to a random starting place and then we can get random numbers from 0 to 1. each time it's a different random number. If you wanted to set n to the roll of a random dice, you could take that number from random number from 0 to 1 and multiply it by 6. and you would get a random number. Let's try it one more time. There we go. The 4051 also has some matrix functions. You can read about those and get details on all the functions here that we've looked at and everything else about the 4051 and its basic language in the 4050 series graphic systems reference manual. A PDF of this manual can be downloaded along with other reference material from the bitsavers.org website. Look in the computing archive section and go down to Tektronics and then the 4050 series and you'll see the manuals. As I mentioned, the 4051 can support arrays and you tell it how big an array is by using the dim statement, which stands for dimension, and you can also dimension a variable to a two-dimensional array. You set the values into the array using parentheses. type the name of that variable, it will show us all the elements of the array. So for example, we could sum up the values by referring to each. Or we could have the 4051 do it quicker with the sum function. You can set all the, the elements of an array to the same value by just saying variable equals number. And there you can see the two-dimensional array. And again, we can find the sum of all the array's elements. So let's write a short program to set an array's values to squares and show their sums. next loop just cycles through the loop variable, in this case i, and gives it the values listed. Here we're going from 1 to 5. Now we're going to just use a little more complicated print statement so we can show the result. The semicolon says don't go down to the next line, but continue printing on the same line. And to run any program, we type run. And there we get the sum of all the values in our array. So to recap, we've shown how to set variable values. We've looked at the many math functions supported by the 4051 and some simple uses of one and two-dimensional arrays. We've learned three new commands, let, dim, and set. In the next video, we'll learn more about how to control what happens in a program in 4051 Basic.